and welcome back to You Read John 120. I am Jeff Clint, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Virginia as part of a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. Uh, and today is actually, unfortunately, I believe, take two of this video. Uh, the first video, if you saw it earlier, uh, you may have noticed that there was something kind of critically important that was missing, i.e. the soundtrack. Uh, there was no sound in the video whatsoever, it was just me kind of blabbing my mouth uh, without any sound being uh, received by my laptop. So, uh, this one, hopefully the sound is coming through. Uh, if not, uh, tell me. Of course, you wouldn't be able to tell me if there was no sound, but yes, uh, tell me, send me a message if this sound is working. Uh, so, uh, this uh, video is going to be on one George Polya, uh, which I found out about. And so, I, it, when I was a first year student, uh, I had a couple of classes with textbooks that I would, of course, then after I read the textbook, I would, in addition to going back and seeing if I could use the, the results of well, anything that I learned uh, in other areas, I would also go through the uh, references. And anything that was kind of written down as uh, a, a reference, I would, of course, note down uh, and put onto my to-do list. Um, and I started to notice that there was something strange about uh, this particular person. Uh, in that he seemed to be referred to in most of my, if not all of my classes. Uh, and so from very different vantage points, very different subject matters, uh, there was still this kind of recognition of this, this mathematician uh, as someone who has kind of advanced the state of the art in problem solving, in the view of things, uh, that kind of inspired from very many different fields, uh, different people to do things. Uh, and so, uh, I started to look a little bit more into him and his work, uh, and I will quote from A. H. Schoenfeld, uh, quote, For mathematics education and the world of problem solving, uh, it marked a line of demarcation between two eras, problem solving before and after Polya. Uh, so this is kind of the, a, a good example of how you kind of view this guy and, and his work, so in terms of uh, the, while he may not be as important as, say, uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee uh, or Isaac Newton, uh, if you want to, you know, go into a, a bunch of different topics, uh, specifically topics involving problem solving, which is a lot of the sciences and math, uh, you're very quickly going to find that uh, in the history of that subject, uh, this guy's name is going to come up. And if you want to do something like artificial intelligence, you could do a lot worse than just by starting with his works and kind of reading what he said on whatever topic you're interested in looking into. And apparently that's also true of a lot of areas in computer science and in mathematics. Although, uh, again, I'm not an expert in any of those particular areas, so I will kind of just go on what I've heard for that particular fact. Um, the vast majority of George Polly's work is way over my head. Uh, it goes very deep into mathematics that I have not experienced and have no grounding for. Uh, but just as a kind of, you know, point, uh, he did go very deep into math, and uh, he's an accomplished mathematician in his own right. Uh, he was keen on the split between in-classroom and out-of-classroom work, uh, and what it was possible to do in both of them. And so he's kind of approaching education, and in particular math education, uh, from this kind of vantage point of what it's possible to do, uh, and kind of what up until his day in the early uh, 20th century, uh, what was it kind of actually happening and how people were actually learning. So he, he would have been born in Budapest, uh, Austria-Hungary, back when there was such a thing, uh, eventually prof at ETH Zurich, uh, which was Einstein's school, uh, and eventually Stanford, which is Vint Cerf's school, uh, PhD in 1912, moved to the U.S. because of Hitler, as his family were all Jews. Um, and eventually died in Palo Alto in a, the mid-80s, which is, again, interesting in his own right, given that the personal computing revolution was already happening there at the time, uh, and so he may have even uh, kind of been part of that to some extent as well. Uh, his first job was tutoring a son of a local baron uh, who was struggling due to his lack of problem-solving skills. Uh, and Polya realized that kind of as part of this tutoring, Problem solving was not an innate skill, i.e. you're not born knowing how to solve problems so much as you pick it up and you can learn it and people do learn it and therefore it can be taught. Uh, Polly's advisor was one, quote, 
I'm pronouncing this right, Lipot Fedger, uh, who's also the same guy who advised John von Neumann, uh, Paul Erdos, and Paul Turin, as, and would, would have known, or, and uh, Polly would have known during his lifetime uh, mathematicians like Whale, Hilbert, Klein, Zermelo, Lando, Hardy, and in fact inspired Escher to create some of his works. So this guy is a fairly well-connected guy in the math world at the time, uh, kind of is uh, on par with some of the great minds of his day, uh, and indeed did research and made results into uh, series, number theory, physics, mathematics, and education, mathematics and uh, mathematical analysis, geometry, numerical analysis, group theory, chemistry, logic, graph theory, algebra, combinatronics, voting systems, potential theory, boundary value problems, partial differential equations, functionals, probability, and probably a bunch of areas that I don't even understand. Um, he named a bunch of stuff uh, like random walks. I mean, something as simple as random walks was not really a thing until he kind of got his hands on it, as well as the central limit theorem, which if you go into the video on Bayes, uh, you can kind of see how important that particular theorem was. Uh, his ideas, or one of his ideas, is to classify math problems and math itself in kind of the, the different things within math. Not so much in the uh, way that you kind of would learn it in school, even to this day, kind of going through calculus, your uh, algebra, geometry, etc., uh, but more so much as the way that you s end up solving the problem. And so you'll have some problems that are, have no solution yet, and they'll kind of be in their own category. And then in other categories will depend on how you approach the problem, or how that a problem could be approached. And then that is kind of the index, or the the, the way that mathematics itself is kind of split up. Uh, as far as I know, nobody's really created that book or that encyclopedia or whatever uh, with mathematics split up in that kind of order, but it's interesting that he tried to approach it that way. Because it kind of informs uh, his, one of his main works, uh, the book How to Solve It, uh, which is really a, a way of kind of looking at the basics of problem solving with that kind of direction of, in mind. Uh, so with how to solve it, by the way, reads very much like a hypertext document. Like you could see uh, as if it were written for the World Wide Web itself. Although it was, of course, written probably about 100 years before, or very close to 100 years before the World Wide Web uh, came out. Um, and of course, if, if you kind of look on my website, you'll find a copy has been kind of transcribed word for word for the web to kind of enjoy. Uh, this, uh, it wasn't available uh, when I found out about it, and now it is. There you go. Uh, it was an attempt at codifying how problem solving worked. Uh, so, for example, if you look at attempts at making systems that are capable of artificial intelligence, uh, that is one of the very first steps of, of kind of codifying how, how to make a system that solves problems for you at an abstract and kind of very general level. Uh, and so his, his attempt at codifying how to do that, even though it was done on paper, a lot of the rules are very valid to this day. If, if you were to make a system to do them, you would have gone quite far in making an artificially intelligent system. Uh, and so thanks to him, we have a starting point for the kind of active part of intelligence research, for the part of intelligence that can, when, when you have a problem, can deal with it or can approach it in different kinds of ways. Uh, and it is basically an algorithm for problem solving, uh, if you look at it that way. Going back to kind of the proverb video, uh, the proverb video is basically lifted right from that book. Uh, and so, kind of like many other things in this video series, uh, you, you can kind of trace where that comes from to how to solve it. Uh, Paul, you pointed it out that for pretty much every proverb you could find, you could find another proverb saying something equal and opposite to it. Uh, the same is equally true of memes. Uh, and since it wasn't exactly specified uh, what things mean in pro memes and proverbs, you have a lot of latitude for interpretation. Uh, that's another thing that he kind of pointed out as well. Uh, Paul, you had the idea of gathering together all the known pro proverbs and plan about planning, seeking means, choosing between lines of action, problem solving, uh, etc. Um, and so he was the guy who came up with this kind of approach of 
redefining what science is and what a way of ordering beliefs is based on that kind of approach. Uh, and you, know, you may notice that I could probably go deeper into a lot of his topics that he was interested in, but again, as you may notice, uh, th I've done that in other videos. So a lot of the things that uh, he kind of came up with are worth a video in and of themselves. Uh, and so kind of pick a, a, as many pieces from him as you can. It's not necessarily uh, that important to get kind of any main thrust from him, because he was involved with a lot of things and had a lot of different ideas and came up with a lot of ways of looking at things. So, you know, if you, if, if, if you go to the websites about him, for example, you'll usually find kind of a description of his method or uh, uh, something like that. But again, that is not as important as one of the many different ways of viewing particular kinds of problems that he came up with. Uh, uh, examples of things that uh, he came up with and uh, related to other videos uh, is the different approaches video. Uh, so if you have a plan and continue with it and then your plan doesn't work, uh, it's important to discard that plan and try another plan. Uh, and his point was that this is kind of how mathematics is done in practice, especially at the high level, where you do have to often approach things from many different vantage points and many different viewpoints in order to come across the right way of looking at the problem. He was very fond of drawing a figure and kind of drawing pictures to represent things graphically if you are used to uh, viewing things at, at an algebraic level or, or purely based on symbols alone. Uh, it's related to the grades video because Paulia was very interested in education and would have been very impressed if you could actually connect what you learned with new things rather than just being able to regurgitate facts. Uh, grades from him would have been more valuable even if there was no practical application for what you learned from them merely because of the way that he kind of forced you to connect what you knew with other things that you knew. Uh, it's related to the forest versus trees video because he would have encouraged you to kind of look at both and from both perspectives and to kind of cultivate something within yourself where you're not necessarily viewing things in one way. Uh, it's related to the Fnord video because uh, he would have kind of suggested to be constantly aware of your level of understanding of of the situation and your ability to model the situation in question, and keeping in mind your kind of ignorance of what the word in question means. It's related to the optimization problems video, uh, in that he would have kind of viewed optimization problems in kind of two different senses. Uh, he would have viewed two, two different kinds of questions. Uh, problems defined, uh, so that the kind of solution to what is the optimal solution, or, or, or the, 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 the part of an optimization problem that you're looking for, and then the problems to prove, which is a proof of that your optimal solution is in fact optimal. You would split those two up and approach each of those questions independently. Uh, as kind of mentioned, uh, it's related to the different approaches vi video. Uh, that is a very polio way of looking at things. Uh, it's related to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 video because uh, he was very interested in patterns and finding out where else do those patterns apply? So if you can find a pattern or find a new kind of pattern, uh, is there a way of finding that pattern in other places that you weren't looking for? It's related to the presuppositions video because it turns out to be really important when you start asking the question, quote, how could I have learned this thing that I have just learned? And what else could I learn from what it took me to learn this thing? Uh, so kind of viewing the, the kind of basis of how you came across new knowledge as, again, the basis for learning, learning new knowledge. Uh, it's related to the Addicto Simpliciter video, because you can learn rules and exceptions quicker than you can just memorize a bunch of data points. Uh, if you can force yourself to view the world in terms of rules and in terms of uh, kind of functional uh, descriptions of things, uh, a lot of the time you can get to insight quicker. Uh, it's related to the analogy video. Again, analogy is one of the chapters of how to solve it book, so that it's realistically a, a polyism uh, to view mathematics in terms of analogies that can be specified formally. Uh, it's related to pro proverbs videos I've discussed before, uh, as well as to the artificial intelligence and epistemology video, uh, as kind of, again, descri described earlier. It's related to the Descartes method, uh, because like Descartes, Paulia proceeded from certainties, and so he would have been 
uh, kind of meticulously building bases of belief in more and more complicated things, kind of leading the, the student or the learner from simple things to more and more complicated things as he went. Uh, he wouldn't have been quite as interested as Descartes was on that particular viewpoint, but still, uh, it's, it's very similar in, in how he approached certainty and the kind of drawing knowledge from that certainty, uh, at least on that level. Uh, it's related to the proof by contradiction, which is, again, another topic in Polly's book, uh, and how you could get to be uh, kind of very uh, skilled at using the proof by contradiction to prove things in mathematics uh, is an important thing that he kind of discussed. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to kind of leave you with three questions from Polya, which are, are kind of core at his method or, or the way that he would approach things, which is that what is the unknown, i.e. what are you looking for? What is the, the kind of thing that you need to solve your problem? Uh, kind of keeping your focus on that unknown, and specifically on the gaps in your knowledge, uh, is sometimes fruitful to kind of allowing you to make sure that you're covering up those gaps and that you're uh, moving towards kind of rectifying them or viewing them in a way that you can uh, make them not gaps anymore. Quote, have you seen it before? I, is the pattern that you're looking at familiar uh, and related to some other problem? Um, so again, all, all, all sorts of questions like this are waiting for you in how to solve it. Uh, it's a good book. Uh, it's not that long. And again, you don't have to read the whole thing. You can kind of pick and choose which chapters you read, very similar to how you would pick and choose which parts of uh, a website you would go to. Because again, it's, it's very uh, modular and self-contained, uh, chapter by chapter. Uh, so kind of go go have at her and uh, try reading a little bit of that book. See if you can get anything out of it. But most importantly, know that George Polya has has done this work trying to codify how problem solving works and has kind of laid the foundation for future thinkers to, to approach problems that they don't understand uh, in a rigorous way that will eventually uh, hopefully be at least somewhat all automatable. As usual, if uh, there are any questions uh, about Paul yet or uh, any of the topics that he covers, uh, feel free to ask them anywhere where this video is posted. Um, there should be a Bitcoin donation address at the bottom here. Uh, which may end up being uh, useful as a kind of legal uh, defense fund at defending the public domain, which unfortunately is not part of. Uh, and uh, as usual, uh, hopefully you enjoy. Uh, feel free to tune in next video where we kind of re-catch up to where we were before we took a video without sound. See you next video. Or uh, see you then.